Hello and welcome to the third episode of Battle Companies The Darkness of Moria Sumo Wrestling Fireball In this episode the Battle Companies have moved further into the depths of Moria They have to fight to get control of this area of the mountain in the mission Secure the Area the first battle today will be between the Last Alliance and Karna, as you can see over here. The second battle will be between Kirith Angul and Oskiliath. Before we move into the mission and the battle reports, I just want to shout out uh, Rutger and Louisan and my wife. They have all contributed a cup of coffee to me, and if you want to do the same, you can go on to uh, buymeacoffee.com. The link is in the description and support me. If you don't want to do that, that is totally fine. Just uh, it's an option if you really want to. Okay, let's go. All right, so the rules for this mission is simple. It's all about controlling the well in the center of the board. To win, you have to have twice as many models as the opposing force at the end of the battle. And the battle may suddenly end if a force is broken on a roll of a one or a two. For deployment, it's totally random. You roll a die for each model on a roll of a two, you start over there. On a roll of a three, it's over there. Four, it's here where I'm standing, and five, it's on the other side. On a one, you do not come in this round, and on a six, you can choose where to deploy. So, the first battle will be between Karna and the last lines, but before we get into deployment, these two, uh, Karzanil and Louisan, have to roll their old battle wounds. Let's start with Karzanil. On a 1, he cannot join, and a 2 is rolled, so he can join, and Louisan is next, and he gets a 2 also. So, they can join the battle. Let's get into deployment for the first turn. I meant priority, of course. The red die will be Karna, and the blue die will be the last lions. Who will get priority? It will be Karna. All right, so that is movement phase done for Karna. We have one sniper on the hill over here, and we have uh, Jeremiah and uh, Stuart Lim over there. Uh, on this, that side, we have three warriors, and over here we have um, Jackson L and two warriors as well. Let's go on to movement phase for the last alliance. And that is deployment done for the last alliance. They had one warrior over on this side. And uh, Simonir with his bow came in at this hill together with Karzanil and two other warriors of Numenor. On the other side we have Louisan and a warrior of Numenor and we have one elf that did not get to enter this round. But hopefully we will see him the next round. Let's go into the shooting phase. So Karna will be starting their shooting phase, starting with this warrior with bow over here, who will fire at Simonir on the other side of the hill, needing a 5 up to hit because he moved, and he hits. Strength of 2 against defense 5, so we need 6s. No. Jackson L and his uh, companion over here does not have the range or the visibility to shoot at any targets. So we move over to that one over there. He can fire his bow, but his friends are in the way and he won't risk it. So let's go on to shooting phase for the last alliance. And the only one with the bow is Simonir and he will fire into Stuart Lim in the front over there. Needing a 4 up to hit because he moved and no. No fights this turn, so we move over to the next turn. But remember that when you come in from the board edge, you cannot go into combat. So that is totally natural. That is not any fighting right now. But let's see who gets priority for the next turn. Karna gets a 6 and the last lines gets a 1. So Karna went into combat over here with Stuart Lim and uh, Jeremiah, uh, trying to negate the firing of Simon Nier. Because of their low defense, I think that is wise. The other warrior of Karna just went down half a distance to be able to shoot his bow. And over here, all of the warriors moved forward closer to the action. On the other side, we have a two-on-one fight over there and an elf against an archer. And for the last two, Warriors of the last lions, they come in from this side. Or this one was already in, but the last elf went in from this side as well. So let's go into the shoot phase for Karna. Only one shot this turn from Karna, and this warrior will fire at Simonir over there. So he needs a 5 up to hit because he moved and he misses. 
Next, Simonir will return the favor, firing at this warrior needing a 4 up to hit because he moved. No, he stood still. He needs a 3 up to hit, actually. And he hits strength of 3 against a defense of 4. So he needs a 5. Nope. Going into the fight phase, we will start with Jeremiah against a warrior of Numenor. And the warrior of Numenor will set the bar. He will be shielding as he is facing two attacks and he gets a six. That is a very strong start. And uh, Jeremiah gets a five. So he loses the fights, but no strikes are made. Next, we have Stuart Lim and Carzonil and a friend. And uh, Stuart Lim will set the bar. He has two attacks and he gets a six. And Carzonil, can he beat this? Gets a four and his friend gets a three. Stuart Lim needs fives and he gets double ones. Oh no, this was a great chance, but he missed. Next, we have Luisan against the Haradrim Warrior and the Haradrim Warrior will set the bar. Luisan will be striking two handedly and he gets a two. Luisan, can you beat this? He do! Normally, he will need a 5 to wound, but because of his two-handed weapon, he only needs force. Let's see, can he do this as well? No! But he will use a point of might, turning that into a 4, killing the Radrim warrior. Next, we have two warriors of Karna against a man, man of Numenor, and the man of Numenor will be shielding. Karna will set the bar, they get a 5. Can he fend off these attacks? Come on! He also gets a 5. And with the higher fight value, he will win the fight. Not making strikes because he shielded. Priority for the next turn goes to... The last alliance, because Karna had it last time. Alright, so that is moment done for both sides. Carson Neil and his friend who went into combat with Stuart Lim once again. And Jeremiah has to fight this warrior of Numenor. Simonir stood still to fire his bow, and so did this warrior of Karna. Over here we have a man and an elf running towards the central objective because on the other side of the hill we have um, uh, Jackson L and two of his friends going fast forward towards the well. Remember, if you have more models or twice the many, as many models as the opponent when the battle ends, you win the game. So that is very important. On the other side we have a one-on-one -on -one fight, so let's go into the shooting phase. Starting with Simonid, he will fire his bow at this warrior over here. <laughs> And he misses. The warrior will fire back at Simonid, needing a 4, and he hits. He has a strength of 2, so he needs 6s against Simonid. Can he do it? No! Going into the fight phase, we will start with Stuart Lim, and he will set the bar against Carson Nil and a friend, and he gets a 5. Can Carson Nil deal with this? He gets a 4, and the other man gets a 5. And that means it is a tie, and we have to roll off on a 1, 2, 3, it goes to Stuart Lim. If not, Carson Nil takes the fight, and it's going to the last alliance on a 6. This is really bad for Stuart Lim, because uh, he will be wounded on 4s, but he has 2 wounds and 1 fate. Can he survive this? Probably he will. Carson Nil, you need a 4 to wound, can you do it? He gets a 4, that is 1 wound, and the other man... One more wound, oh man. Stuart Lim will have to save this using his fate points, and he saves. Next, we have Jeremiah against a man of Numenor, and Jeremiah will start. The man of Numenor will be shielding to get an advantage in this fight because Jeremiah has two attacks, and Jeremiah gets a five. And the man, can he deal with this? No, double ones, terrible rolling. Jeremiah will need fives to kill him, can he do it? He gets the six, the warrior of Numenor is slain. On the other side of the table, we have two one-on-one -on -one fights. Luisan against a Haradrim warrior, and the Haradrim warrior will set the bar. Luisan will be striking two-handedly, of course. And he gets a one, terrible. So Luisan will probably win this, and he gets a two, which is turned down to a one. But he wins on fight value. Making strikes, he needs fours once again, and he gets the five, the warrior is slain. Next, we have these two warriors, and the Numenorian man will get in first, and he gets a five. Can he beat this? And he does not. Now, the man of Numenor has a strength of five against the defense of five, so it's, uh, or <laughs> strength of four against defense four, so it's fours to kill. This can be ugly. Can he kill him? No, he gets a one. 
All right, so we have had a couple of kills, but the battle is far from over. Going into priority, Karna gets a two, and the last lines gets a two as well, which means Karna takes it this turn. All right, so movement phase is done for both sides. This warrior of Karna stood still to fire his bow, and uh, the elf and the man continued their walk towards the central objective. On this side over here, we have Carson Hill against Stuart Lim, and Simone went down from the hill, supporting his friend against Jeremiah. In the middle, we have one warrior of Haradrim who has claimed the objective, so as of right now, they are in the lead. And Jackson L and his friends stood still to fire their bow. They are having enough of these two over here. We'll try to thin them out, even though they are in combat with this warrior. So let's go into the shooting phase. Starting with this warrior over here, who will fire his bow at the warrior in the front, needing a four up to hit because he stood still and he misses. Next, we have Jackson L firing into the combat over there, and he needs a three up to hit because he stood still and he hits. Needing a 4-up to uh, not hit his own warrior. And he does not! He hits his own warrior! Oh no! Catastrophe! A strength of 2 against Stephen's 4, so we, uh, fives will kill his warrior. <laughs> he does! Oh no! He kills his own friend! But he would probably be dead anyway against these two over there. So, he is slain, unfortunately. But that means that the other archer can fire without any um, features in his way. So he will fire, he needs a 4 because he stood still, and he hits. Needing a 6 to wound, and no. Oh, but he has poisoned arrows, so he can reroll that because it's a 1, and no, not good enough. Going into the fight phase, there's only these two fights, Stuart Lim against Carson Hill, and Carson Hill will be shielding. And uh, Stuart Lim will set the bar, he gets a 4. Four. And Carson Hill, can he defend against this? He does not! He gets a two, so he loses the fight. Stuart Lim needs fives to wound Carson Hill. Can he do it? He gets one five. Carson Hill, fate roll. He saves, but he loses his fate points. Next, we have Jeremiah against Simon Eater and a friend. And Jeremiah was at the bar. He gets double ones. Oh no! And Simon Eater gets a four, which means they win the fight. So Jeremiah has upgraded his defense to 4, which means that Simonir will need 5s uh, to wound and the man will need 4s. Let's start with Simonir. Can he do it? He gets a 1 and the man, he needs 4s. He gets a wound. Fate roll for Jeremiah and he saves. Priority for the next turn goes to... The Last Alliance on a 6. All right, movement phase is done, and we have the same fights as last turn over here. This warrior with bow continues to stand still to fire at the elf and the man, closing in on the objective. Uh, this spearman stood still, uh, just holding the objective for now, and um, uh, Jackson L and his friend moved half distance to getting closer to the objective, but can still fire their bows at their enemies, uh, which is closing in by the minute. Let's go into the shooting phase. No shooting from the last lines, but this warrior will fire at the man in the front, needing a 4-up to hit because he stood still and won, so he misses. Next, this warrior will fire at uh, Louisan over there, and he needs a 5-up to hit, firing his bow, and he misses. Jackson L, same target, and he hits. Six is to wound, and he gets the six, incredible! Fate roll for Luzon, and he saves. Going into the fight phase, Carson Hill against Stuart Lim, and Carson Hill will be shielding. He gets a four. Stuart Lim gets a four as well, which means it's a tie. So it is a roll of four to six, goes to Carson Hill, and it does. Next, Jeremiah is fighting Simon Eater and a friend, and Jeremiah will set the bar, and he gets a three. Simonir, can you beat this? Yes, he does, with a 5. Now, remember that uh, Jeremiah does not have any more fate points, so Simonir will kill him on a 5. And he gets a 4, and the man gets a 5. So the man will slay Jeremiah. Priority for the next turn goes to... the Karna Warband. 
All right, so movement is done. This warrior went down from the hill, uh, moving half distance to still be able to shoot. And uh, Jack Snell and his friends stood still to fire their bows. They need to get some shots in and kill some of the last lines to get this to go their way. Stuart Lim, realizing that he's outnumbered and probably gonna die, will try to retreat, negating the charge of the other ones, because Carsonell doesn't want to go into combat with him one-on-one. -on -one. Instead, they sent Simonir out on the flank to fire his bow at him. So let's go into the shooting phase. This warrior will fire at the elf over there, needing a 5 because he moved, and he misses. Jackson Nell is next and he will fire into Louisan over there and he needs a 3 up to hit and he hits strength of 2 against defense 5 so 6 is to wound, can he do it? No! The other warrior will need a 4 up to hit, he stood still after all and he misses. There is only one fight this turn and it's the Radrim warrior with spear against the Numenorean man and the Karna gets a 3 and the man gets a 4. Needing force to kill. This is uh, not good for the Heradrim, and he gets a 5, slaying the warrior. At the end of the turn, Karna is reduced to below 50% and the game may suddenly end. As it stands right now, the last lines has the objective and on a 1 or a 2, the game ends. So let's see. It's a 1 and that means that the game is finished. The last lines has won, so congratulations to them. Just real quick, I forgot to fire with Simonir and he will just do that to get that out of the way and he misses, so no worries. Alright, so the next battle will be between Kirith Angle and Oskiliath. Kirith Angle have uh, gotten a spider, so that will be interesting to see how that works. It's fast and it's deadly, but doesn't have uh, very much defense. Um, Malarzian has an old battle wound and he needs to roll that now. On a 1 he cannot participate in this battle and he gets a 6 so he's good to go. Alright so let's go into priority for the first turn and Osgiliath will get a 4 and Kirith Angle gets a 5 so Kirith Angle will deploy first. Alright so the initial movement is done and the b main bulk of the evil force has deployed over here with Krishla and three of his warriors. And the giant spider went up on this hill, uh, trying to use his mobility to his, his advantage. And over here we have two warriors with shield. Uh, there are two heroes, Joshok and uh, uh, Joner, did not make it this round, but they will probably come in at a later stage. For the Oskiliath warband, we have a ranger on top over here and a, a warrior, I think it's uh, Tidero, over there. Uh, and we have uh, two uh, warriors with spear and shield over here, and a ranger over here, and Malarzian and a friend, or uh, Malarzian and uh, Michael Ir went in from this side. So let's see what happens in the shooting phase, and let's go. By the way, Oskiliath did not get, uh, there was one warrior who didn't enter play, so we will see what happens next. Starting with the shooting phase, this orc will fire a cheeky shot up at Malarzian over there, needing a 6 to hit because he moved and he misses. Shooting for Oskiliath, starting with this ranger over here, who will fire into this spearman just within 24 inches, needing a 4 up to hit because he moved and he misses. Next we have Malarzian, he will fire at the same orc and he needs a 4 up to hit and he misses as well. The last ranger on top of the hill over there will fire down at the closest orc with shield needing a 4 up to hit because he moved and he hits. Needing 6s to kill and oh early kill for him slaying an orc. Alright that is shooting done let's go into priority for the next turn. Oskiliath gets a 2 and Kirithangul gets a 2 as well which means that Oskiliath will start. In the shooting phase, I forgot that Malarzian does not get a penalty when he shoots because of his special rule, but he didn't hit anyway. Now, that is movement done for both sides, and this is turning into an inter interesting battle. Uh, the last uh, warrior of the uh, Oskiliath warband moved in over here. Malarzian moved full and will be able to shoot with no penalty. Um, and Michael Lear moved down from the hill, trying to get into combat with these guys eventually, who just moved forward. And this one moved half distance to be able to shoot. These two warriors moved towards the objective, and Tyler 
Valero is moving to link up with them eventually. He's just under the bridge over there. And the two other, Joshok and um, uh, Joshok and uh, Joner, uh, come, came in from this side over there, want to uh, support their comrades. The one with the shield moved closer to the objective and the giant spider went up on the bridge, trying to get rid of the ranger on the hillside. So let's get into the shooting phase. Starting with this orc with bow, who will fire at Malarzian once again, needing a 6 to hit, and he misses. Shooting phase for Oskiliath, Malarzian will fire at the orc with spear over there, needing a 3 up to hit, and he misses as well. This ranger over here will fire at the same target, needing a 4 up to hit because he moved, and he misses a lot of ones this game. And the last ranger on the hill will fire at the giant spider, getting a minus 1 penalty because he moved, needing 4 up. And he hits! Strength of 2 against the defense of 3 on the giant spider, needing a 5 up to wound. And no. No combats just yet, so we move to priority for the next turn. And uh, Oskiliath gets a 1, and uh, the orcs get a 2. Alright, so that is movement done for both sides. The orcs continued their march towards the objective in the center, trying to link up with their other heroes on the other side. Uh, the uh, orc archer just moved full to get away from the uh, Oskiliath warband, and they just followed suit, trying to get closer in to get some fights on uh, soon. This ranger stood still to fire its bow on full capacity, and these warriors went in towards the objective, linking up with Tylero, who came under the bridge over there. The giant spider are set in his ways and will try to kill this ranger over here, but he will get one round of shooting before that happens. So let's get into the shoot phase. Malarzian will start and he will fire at the orc with bow, needing a three up to hit, and he misses, rolling a one once again. This other ranger over here will fire at the one with spear in the front, needing a 3 up to hit, and he gets a 1 once again! What's up with this rolling? And the last ranger up on the hill will fire at the giant spider, he needs a 3 up to hit because he stood still, and he gets a 2. <laughs> they are quite afraid. Nothing more happens this turn, so priority for next turn goes to... Oh, it's a tie. So it goes to Oskiliath. All right, so finally we get some fights over here. Krishla and two of his friends went into combat with this warrior and Michael here is fighting one-on-one -on -one against this orc. Malarzian moved full to get closer to his friends and this ranger stood still to fire his bow. Uh, these two warriors with shield and spear and Tylero are closing in on this orc pack and uh, the two heroes of Kirithangul, Joshok and <laughs> Jonner, sorry, uh, are closing in as well. The ranger tried to flee, but was not good enough. He, the giant spider went to combat with him, so let's go into the shooting phase for Skileth. Malarzian will go first, and he has a clear shot on uh, Jonner over there, needing a 3 up to hit, and he hits finally. Strength of 2 against defense of 4, so 5s to kill. No. And this ranger will fire at Jonner to the right, needing a 3 up to hit because he stood still and he gets a 1 for the third time. Moving on to the fight phase, this warrior of Osgiliath will be shielding against Krishla and his minions and the warrior will set the bar, he gets a 5. Next Krishla will fight and he gets a 1 and the two orcs, can they beat a 5? They get a 4, so it's not good enough. Next, we have Michael Lear against an orc, and the orc sets the bar and getting a 3. Michael Lear gets a 2. Needing 6s to wound Michael Lear, and no. Next, we have the giant spider against a ranger, and the ranger will set the bar. He gets a 6, that is important, and the giant spider gets a 4. Needing 4s to wound the spider, and gets a 4, so one wound taken. Priority for the next turn goes to Oskiliath. All right, so movement is done for both sides, and we have some combats over here favorable for Oskiliath and uh, a lot of one-on-ones, but Tylero went in to support his friends over here against this orc with spear. Malarsia moved off to the side to try to fire at the oncoming heroes and orcs, and over there the ranger tried to back off but got caught by the spider once again. So let's get into shooting phase. Malarsian will fire at Joshok on the right side, needing a 3 up to hit and he misses. This ranger cannot fire as well as the one over there, so let's go into the fight phase. 
Starting with Michael Lear against this orc with bow, Michael Lear sets the bar, he gets a 5, and the orc gets a 3, losing the fight. Michael Lear needs a 5 to kill the orc, can he do it? He do! The orc is slain. Next we have Krishla against a warrior, and uh, Krishla will set the bar, he gets a 4, and the warrior gets a 6. Fives the wound, and he wounds as well! Fate roll for Krishla, and he fails, but he will use a might point, turning that into a 4, saving himself. Next we have this warrior and against the spearman of the orcs, and the orc sets the bar, and getting a 1, and the spearman gets a 1 as well, which means the fight is a tie. On a 1 to 3, goes to evil, and it goes to good. 5 up to kill the orc, and gets the 6, the orc is slain, incredible rolling for Oskiliath. Next we have Tylero supporting his friend against an orc with spear and the orc will set the bar, he gets a 6, strong start. And the warrior gets a 4 and Tylero gets a 1. Needing 6s to kill and no. Lastly we have the giant spider against the ranger and the giant spider will set the bar getting a 5 and the ranger gets a 4, losing the fight. The spider has a strength of 5 against a defense of 4, so he needs 4s to kill, and he gets the 6, and the ranger is slain. Priority for next turn goes to... Uh, Kirithangul. Alright, so the fight is on, and positioning here is key to who will claim the objective. As we can see here, there are a lot of fights, we will go through them in just a minute, and the giant spider is moving at full speed towards the fighting. No shooting this turn, so let's go into the fight phase. Starting with this fight, Krishla will set the bar against a warrior of Oskiliath, and the warrior will win. Needing 5s to kill Krishla and gets a 4. Next we have a 1 on f 1 fight over here and Minas Tirith uh, warrior will set the bar, he gets a 3 and the orc gets a 5. Needing 6s to kill and gets a 2. A 1 on 1 fight over here and uh, the warrior of Oskiliath will get a 6 and the orc gets a 1. Needing 5s to kill the orc and no. Next we have Talero and Malarzian against Joshok, and uh, Joshok will set the bar and he gets a 2. Malarzian gets a 2 as well and Talero a 6, winning the fight for the team. They need 5 to kill, Malarzian will start, he gets a 5 and Talero a 4. Fate roll for Joshok and he gets a 3, which means he fails, but he will use a point of might, turning that into a 4, and in turn Tylero will use a point of might, turning his die into a 5, killing Joshok outright. Next we have Jonner against the warrior of Minas Tirith, and Minas Tirith warrior gets a 2, and Jonner gets a 5. Needing 5s to kill the warrior, and he gets a 6, slaying him. As it stands right now, no force is broken, but we'll go into priority and see what the next turn holds. Uh, Oskiliath gets a 2 and Kirithangul gets a 4. Alright, so that is movement done and the giant spider is closing in on the well. And over here we have two one-on-one -on -one fights. Uh, Michael, Michael Lear and uh, Malazian and the ranger buddy moved up closer to the objective to be within range in case they need to be close this turn. Let's get into the fight phase. Starting with these two warriors, the uh, Minas Tirith warrior will get a 1 and the orc gets a 2. 6 is to kill and no. Next we have Krishla against this warrior with spear and shield, and Krishla sets the bar, he gets a 1, and the warrior gets a 2. Needing 5s to wound Krishla, and no. Next we have Michael Lear and Tylero against the orc with shield, and the orc will be shielding, getting a 6. Tylero gets a 2, and Michael Lear gets a 1. Next we have Jonner against two rangers, and Jonner sets the bar, he gets a 4, uh, Malarzian. Gets a 4 as well, and the other ranger gets a 2. Because Jonner in the last round got upgraded and got a fight of 5, he will win the fight on fight value. But because of this, Malarzian will use his might point, turning his 4 into a 5, and Jonner in turn will do the same, making it the same result but depleted on might. Jonner will go after the ranger, trying to secure a kill, and he needs a 4 up to kill him, and gets a 3. Priority for the next turn goes to Kirithangul. 
All right, so this is quite interesting. The orcs are pulling back and the giant spider is coming forwards, tying up both Malarsian and Tylero, trying to stop them from gaining the advantage. We have two one-on-one -on -one fights over here, Michael Lear against the warrior and Joner against a ranger. And we have these two fights over here. So let's start with the fight phase. Starting with this fight, the Minos Tirith guy gets a three and the orc gets a two. Needing fives to kill the orc and no. Next, we have Krishla against a warrior, and Krishla sets the bar. He gets a two, and the warrior gets a five. Fives to wound? No! Next, we have Michael Lear against an orc, and the orc sets the bar and getting a three. Michael Lear can do something about this. No, you get a two! The orc will need sixes, and he gets a six! Fate roll for Michael Lear, and he saves. Next, we have Jonner against the Ranger, and Ranger sets the bar, getting a five. Jonner, can you answer this with a six? Beautiful roll. Needing fours to kill and getting a five, slaying the Ranger. Next, we have the Giant Spider against Malarzian and Tylero, and the Giant Spider will set the bar, getting a three. Tylero gets a three, and Malarzian gets a two. Oh, this is close. The giant spider has only a fight of two, so he loses the fights. Malarzian and Tylero has a strength of three against the defense of three on the spider, so they need four ups to kill it. Uh, Tylero will go first and he gets a six, slaying the spider. As it stands right now, the orcs have been halved and the game may suddenly end. And in addition to this, the orcs have two models within three inches of the well, and Oskiliath have only one. On a roll of one over two, the game will end and the orcs will win. And it becomes a three, and that, I fear, was their chance. Let's go on to the next turn. Priority goes to Oskiliath. All right, that is movement done, and Oskiliath has pulled back towards the well, trying to outnumber the orcs. But one of the orcs gets into combat over here, making it a two-on-two -two fight, and here we have a two-on-two -two as well. Krishla is stuck with this warrior in the back over here. This is really exciting. These fights will determine the outcome of the battle, I'm sure. Let's get into the fight phase. I forgot to roll a card check for this orc with spear. Uh, they are halved after all. And he succeeds, so it's the same outcome. First we have Krishla against a warrior, and the Minas Tirith warrior will get a three, and Krishla gets a one. Needing fives to kill, and no. Next we have these two orcs against uh, Michael Ir and a friend, and the orcs will set the bar, they get a five. Michael Lear gets a five as well, and his friend gets a six, winning the fight. Michael Lear will go first, needing a five to kill the orc, and he gets a five. The orc is slain. Pink. Next, we have Jonner against Malarzian and Tylero, and Jonner will set the bar. He gets a one. Malarzian gets a two, winning the fight. Needing fives to kill, Tylero will start, and he gets a three, and Malarzian gets a six. Jonner has a fate point. Can he save himself? Yes, he does. All right, so on a roll of a one or a two, the game will end and Oskiliath will win. Let's see what it becomes. It's a three, so one more turn. Priority goes to Oskiliath. The fight is on once again and we'll go into the combat phase, starting with Krishla against a warrior of Minas Tirith, and a Minas Tirith warrior gets a four, Krishla gets a three. He's pushed back and on a five up, he's killed. No. Next, we have Michael Lear and a friend against an orc and the orc will set the bar, getting a five. Michael Lear gets a five as well and his friend gets a four. The fight values are the same, so on a one to three, it goes to the orc. And it does. Needing sixes to wound Michael Lear and he gets a three. Next, we have Jonner against Tylero and Malarzian. And Jonner sets the bar, gets a five. Malarzian gets a six, winning the fight. Needing a five up to kill. Tylero will go first and he gets a five. And no more fate points for Jonner, so he is slain. Will the game end on a one or a two? It does. The game is finished and Oskiliath has come out on top. They are victorious. Let's go into the post battle and bookkeeping. All right, so welcome to the post battle. We will start with injuries for Oskiliath. And on the right, we have a ranger. He gets a seven, which is a full recovery. The next ranger 
get a 8, an 8, and that's a full recovery. And the last warrior gets a 5, which means he is injured and must miss the next battle. Next we have experience, and we have three uh, warriors that got enough experience to level up, starting with the one with shield on the right. Uh, that's a regular warrior, so on a five, uh, 4 to 5 it's, uh, he's promoted, and on a 6 he becomes a hero. Gets the 6, so he will become a hero. He will get a point of fate, and I will have to give him a name. Next we have Malarzian, he got enough experience as well and will be rolling on the path of the ranger. He gets a 5, which is attack or wound. Since he is mainly using his bow, he will choose wound to uh, make him more survivable. Lastly, we have Michael Ear. This is his first upgrade and he will choose the path of the general. He gets a 10. And that is Might or Will, so he will choose Might, giving him two Mights in total. Lastly, we will go to Reinforcements, and they have four influence points and will roll on the Reinforcement table. They get a four, which is a Warrior of Minas Tirith with Bow. Now, I just realized that they cannot include any more bows because of the 33% rule, so I will just make that a regular Warrior of Minas Tirith with Shield. The next battle company we will take a look at is the Last Alliance, and they had only one death in, uh, during this battle. So that is a regular warrior, and injury rolls for him is a 7, so he gets a full recovery. Alright, so the next thing we will have to take a look at is promotions, and we have this elf on the right hand side. Uh, he could become a hero on a roll of a 6, let's see if he does it. No, he is not uh, becoming a hero, and we have Luisan who got enough kills to uh, um, yeah level up, <laughs> and he is in the path of the warrior, and he gets an eight, which is strength or defense, and he will choose strength. This will give him a lot of options in close combats. Uh, normally, if the enemy has a defense of four, he will wound on force and may not need his two-handed weapon to do that. And if he needs to, he can uh, roll threes to wound. So one plus one strength to him is nice. Next we have reinforcements, uh, and they have four influence points, and we'll roll on the reinforcement charge. They get a four, which is a warrior of Numenor with bow. Moving over to the evil battle companies, we will start with Karna, and uh, uh, we will start with injury rolls. So, four regular warriors first, starting with the archer on the right, he gets a five, so he's injured. And the next one gets a 10, full recovery. The next one gets a 4, so he's also injured. And the next one gets a 8, so full recovery. And lastly, we have uh, Jeremiah. And he gets a 7, which is a full recovery. Alright, so not a lot of advancements, but these two spearmen got enough experience. So starting with the left one on um, a 5 to 6, something happens, gets a 5, so he's promoted. And that means that he becomes a warrior of Karna, getting plus 1 fight value. That is a house rule I made, because normally they will just get one better shoot value. But uh, since they have a spear, they'll get a plus 1 fight value. So the next one, promoted or nothing, it's nothing. Next we have reinforcements, and they got two influence points from this loss, but they had two from uh, last time. So they have four in total, and we roll on the reinforcements table. And they get a two, which is a Haradrim warrior with spear. Lastly, we have Kirithangal, and they lost a lot of warriors. So we will just have to roll them up to see who is uh, injured or not. Starting with the giant spider, it gets a 9, full recovery. The next orc gets a 9, full recovery. The next one gets 10, full recovery. And uh, the one with bow gets a 4, who has to miss, miss the ne next uh, battle. Last warrior with shield gets a 6, which is a full recovery. Next we have Jonner, and he gets a 10, which is an old battle wound. Next we have Joshok, which gets a 6, and that is a full recovery. Previously he had an arm wound, and that is now cured. 
None of the warriors got enough experience to level up, but they have three influence points in total, one from earlier and two from this game. So they can roll on the reinforcements and they get a five, which is a mortar urukai with choice of weaponry. And we will choose a two-handed weapon. All right, so that is it for now. I hope you enjoyed the battle report. If you want to support me, subscribe, like, and share this video and comment uh, if you have any questions. If you want to buy me a cup of coffee, feel free to follow the link in the description. I will really appreciate it, but it's not necessary if you don't want to. Okay, until next time, see ya.